So this is a part for Springy. Springy is another mod that you can use with Sturdy Bunny ERCF. And I wanted to show a little bit about what I'm doing to, to try to put it together. I've already put the inserts. You're going to follow the ERCF manual. You're going to put inserts in the same locations. You're going to put one here. You're going to put one there. You're going to put one there. And eventually you're going to put one in a new place unique to Springy. It's not part of the um, original uh, selector uh, that comes with Sturdy Bunny or ERCF. Alright, so there are also three supports. They're labeled three, two, and one. You're going to want to remove those. Okay. Alright, so you got those supports removed. I've already installed them. Um, these inserts as you can tell. Reading the springy documentation it says you're supposed to push this down further than it being flush. You want to push it down one millimeter and you can kind of see that in the picture of the springy documentation. Um, let's see these I put in flush but I still need to put if this is the back side, Springy documentation says you need to put an insert way down there. That's because there's going to be a screw here that's going to push down on the servo, which is going to pivot over here. And uh, you need to retain that screw. So that's going to be tricky. I'll, I'll see what I can do about making that one work. So I've got my soldering iron heated up. Um, but this one, I think I turned it up to 225. I'll see. So I'm just going to see if I can get that hot. Push it down further. There we go. It's starting to go. That's about one millimeter. Looks like it's pushed up a little bit. Let me push it back down. I'm going to use this screw. I want to make sure it's straight. But also hold it in place. So I'll also help cool it down a little bit. Okay. There's a little bit of a lip that formed pushing it down. I'm going to have to clean that up. I'll just get a knife for that. Okay. It's about a minute. It's about a millimeter compared to this surface. I think I should clean this up a little bit more. All right, that's pretty good. It's close to a millimeter. Now the tricky part is to get a heat set insert down there. It's a tight fit. I'm going to use this. I'm going to push it. Push it in. So it's in there somewhat. It actually just fell down. Let me try it the other way. I'll get this long screw. And I'll pull it. Okay. So that's not fully seated, obviously, but it's started. Next step is I'm going to get a short screw. Start it in. So now I have metal because the problem you're going to have is my soldering iron won't push down into there. So I'm going to change my tip and use the screw. I can see it and how far it is. I'm going to use this tip and we'll see what we can do. See if that'll transfer enough heat. Yeah, I don't think it's going down. I'm going to turn up my temperature. We'll put it to 340. I think it's going down. 
Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's going down. Yeah. All right. So before it cools off too much, we swap screws. We want this to be straight. I'm also going to use the opportunity to pull on it. That looks straight. It's definitely raised up, so I did push it down. There's a little bit of um, cleanup that I need to do where the screw head touched that surface. I don't know if it's going to be necessary or not. Depends on how that spring goes, but I'm going to clean that up. So, just cleaning up. <sighs> Make sure this hole is nice and free of any debris. But I'm pretty sure that inset is and they're pretty pretty good and I accomplished what I needed to so alright you got that insert got that insert that one's recessed by about one millimeter we got another heat set insert over there and one over here next thing I'm going to show you is this piece here which is going to be the uh, tensioner you can see there's teeth on here for the belt it's going to go in here and I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is there's going to be a screw that can be used to push down on here and slide that forward to tighten the belt. And I just want to make sure that the action looks good. Okay. So I guess I need to look at what's next. We'll see. The next step is um, to get your servo set up to be installed. So I'm using an MG90S servo, that's what my kit came with. This part says MG90S on it. You get a choice between this and the other part. So I've already printed this out. There are four supports. These two already fell off just by lifting it off the build plate. But there were two here. And there are two more right here and one right there. So you're going to want to remove those somehow anyway. I'm going to use these side cutters. Just try to grab it. Alright, there's one. And we'll do the other one. Same way. Alright. Cut it out. Alright. Alright, so this piece is going to drop in here like this. And it's going to swivel over there. And that one's going to use an M3 by 20. My kit has M3 by 20. Um, let me do something first here. Let me dry fit. I always like to dry fit stuff. This screw actually does screw into this piece to get the clearance of this hole isn't so that it can freely pass through or not. It actually does seem to screw in. But that's okay because it's going to pivot. Uh, I think it just needs to be lined up. So that's something. Let me make sure my screw goes all the way through. It might have gotten a little dirty. It looks almost perpendicular. It might be off a little bit. I think it's angling a little bit like this. I'm exaggerating here. But I think it's angling upwards towards the surface. Might need to adjust that heat set. Otherwise, it could bind on this because there's no clearance on that. So I'm going to fix that. This should work. 
Yeah, I'd see M3 by 18. Double check that. This is why I dry fit stuff. Okay, looks good. It swivels. All right, I like it. All right, so we know this is going to fit in here just nice. Now the servo, the servo is going to go in this way. The wires are going to be routed along here. And there's a little channel right there for zip tie. Probably smaller than this, but we can use this to, to try it out. But yeah, that'll work. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Alright. So, the docs say Make sure these screws aren't too long. So again, I'm going to dry fit everything. If they're too long, it wants you to just gently file the ends of them. So let me go ahead and see if I can get this going. Yep. Looks good. These are perfect size. There seems to be some discussion that the other servo option, forget the exact name, is more robust stronger, less problems. Um, but it's about $40 if you can get it. And then I've also read some posts where some problems that people have uh, reported about the servo not being strong enough or being, being problematic aren't actually the servo itself. It's the voltage and current being fed to the servo. Some boards may not be able to provide a solid 5 volts at the, at the current that this needs and you can just use another 5 volt regulated source you know get like a buck converter alright we got this going um, let's do this you're gonna have printed out this small little piece you're gonna need screws I got these from Amazon these are 10 millimeter it says between 10 to 15 I opted to go with the uh, 10 uh, put that little cap on the bottom and you're going to want to drop that into the hole. And there we go. You're going to want to screw uh, my kit has these M3x12s. I think it might be long enough. And then let's, let's go ahead and drop this in and see how, how this looks. Uh, again this has to go down first over here. And then you put this one in. Alright, it's still good it's not protruding out. Alright, so let me um, make an adjustment here. So yeah, you can see that. I'll back off flat, little spring, no more, there we go. So maybe that M3 by 12 is fine. It's a strong spring. So maybe um, I'll have to be careful with how I adjust it. So I'm thinking that's about the basic in, uh, set up for this.